written about the commander, but most of it isn't true. People are quick to judge. They don't know the whole story. I don't even know the whole story. But I know the woman. Worked with her. Fought with her. Trust her with my life. Shepard's had some rough patches. Who of us hasn't? She's been forced to fight a lot of battles alone. God only knows how she got out of some of that. Makes your head spin. Thing is... You never heard a complaint. Never once got, no sir, I can't do that. She never hesitated. Few people know what Shepard's been through. I'd like to think I come pretty close. And I worry sometimes, she forgets. There's a whole bunch of people who lose sleep over her getting back home. Maybe it doesn't need to be said. Maybe we're too dumb to say it. Soldiers like the Commander are rare. Women like Shepard, even more rare. No, no, it's fine. I got a few minutes. First contact war? Yeah. I was there. My first real combat. First for a lot of us. I remember one night early in the war. Strapped to my seat as our transport approached the LZ. Everyone was dead silent. Just the sound of breathing. Good men. I trained with all of them. We were always joking and horsing around, but not this time. Just the rattle of the shuttle. And that heavy breathing. Everyone was thinking the same thing. We're off to fight alien invaders. Aliens. Think about that. We all grew up wondering what was out there. If we were alone in the universe. Now we knew. We weren't alone. And we were in trouble. So there we were. About to face an enemy as different and unknown as we could imagine. I knew I had to say something and keep the men relaxed. So I turned to the soldier beside me, Hendricks, I think, and asked him how his mother was doing. Fine, he said. Why? Because I heard your mama so ugly the Marines thought she was a Turian. Almost shot her. <laughs> I got a few smiles. Then Hendricks turned to me and said, Hell, Anderson, I heard it was a picture of you, Mama, that started this goddamn war in the first place. Scared the Torians shitless. Everyone had a good laugh at that. And the boys fought great that night. Sometimes that's all it takes. A joke, a pat on the back. Just a little reminder that everything's gonna be okay. A few months ago, I had a chance to sit down with one of Earth's most decorated soldiers, Admiral David Anderson. He was kind enough to answer my questions and talk about his career. Today the Admiral is on Earth, leading the defense of our home against the Reapers. We have no communication with him or any soldiers on Earth, but we can't forget what they're doing for us. Tonight's show is dedicated to all of the soldiers out there, fighting and dying to keep us safe. Admiral Anderson, today marks the 30th anniversary of the N7 program. Can you describe your first day of training in this now famous program? The Interplanetary Combatives Training Program is all business from day one. How so? We're given basic gear, then separated and stranded on an asteroid with no nav data. The test ends when the last person runs out of oxygen. That sounds daunting. What happens to the ones who run out of air first? Out of the program. The best N7s can survive alone, but work together to survive even longer. Uh, that's very impressive, Admiral. Deep space survival training. Uh, that has to be... Uh, so difficult. All of it would take such strength of character. Well, just plain strength. But then, you seem like a strong person. I'm sorry. Is there a question in there? Well, does the program make the man, or do you think you were born for this? It's a bit of both, I suppose. Every soldier reaches a point in their career, sometimes more than once, when they are asked to give more than they ever thought they could. That moment is the test. I've seen men and women, almost sure to fail, persevere long past the point of breaking. That experience changes them. Others 
with all the gifts and abilities, fail in that moment. Sometimes they pick themselves up and carry on. Sometimes they're just done. What about you? What was your moment? I've had a few, none of which I'd like to share. But uh, I think the toughest tests are still ahead of me. What makes you say that? Call it a hunch. Soldier's intuition? Something like that. Do you trust your intuition? I mean, do you follow your heart over your mind? <sighs> well, <laughs> it depends on the day. No, I... I suppose if I were to be honest, I do trust my instincts. The problem is... War isn't orderly. And the enemy is never predictable. Even the most experienced veteran is going to find themselves in situations they haven't trained for. In those instances, and there's more than I'd like to admit, your instincts are the only thing keeping you alive. That, and the men and women you're fighting beside. But soldiers are only as good as their leader, isn't that true? Yeah. A good leader can make an okay squad great. A bad leader, well, war tends to make examples of them. What makes a good leader, then? Hmm. A good leader is someone who values the life of his men over the success of the mission, but understands that sometimes the cost of failing a mission is higher than the cost of losing those men. That's a terrible line to have to walk. Yes, it is. But war is a terrible thing. Thank you for your time, Admiral. Thank you. The remainder of this interview was to take a more personal look at Admiral Anderson's life. It wasn't finished when the Reapers invaded. We can only hope that the Admiral and the soldiers under his command survive to tell us the rest of their stories. I'm Kalisa Algelani. Thank you for watching. What was I talking about? Early days, right? People ask why I joined the military. Everyone talks about honor, duty, sure. But that's... never the whole truth. It's a hundred little things that add up to commitment. I joined because of a dog. Yeah. A dog. This patchy, mean son of a bitch that used to bark at me every day on my way to school. He'd snarl and I'd start running. Get the hell out of me. I was just a kid. I remember being in a bad mood one morning. Angry, I can't recall why. When that dog started in on me, I snapped. Started barking right back. We both kept at it until we had nothing left. Dog never bothered me again. Why'd I join the military? Sometimes you just gotta howl to make things right. <laughs>